For this week of our Spike Prime LEGO Robotics, we're going to be using Driving Base 2. And this week, we're going to learn how to use our distance sensor, which is this sensor that has two circles on it. And we're also going to be learning how to use a third motor on our vehicle to control an arm to make it go up and down. So what we're going to do today, we'll start by working on our distance sensor and make our robot stop or turn around or do some different functions when it gets a certain distance from an object. And then we're going to add functionality to our robotic arm. But before we start, I have just a few questions for you. Can you give me an example of a time or a robot that has to interact with objects? Now, there's lots of possible answers for this. But thinking about robots that have to interact with other objects. And so we've built this robot that has an arm. We've also built this little stop sign for our robot using the instructions for driving base two. And we're thinking about ways that robots interact with other objects. Some examples could be in manufacturing. A lot of vehicles are created using robots where the robot will pick up car parts, things that would be too heavy for a human and hold them in place. In warehouses, robots do drive around and pick things off the shelves and then bring them to human packers to put into boxes. In farming and agriculture, there are a lot of robots that will drive the combines or actually harvest and pick the fruit. In construction, you might have robots equipped with heavy machinery and arms that can lift and move heavy materials like concrete blocks or steel beams. There's medical applications as well. Sometimes robots with arms can assist with surgery or help to lift patients. And then you also have some robots at home that may just push a lawnmower or drive around your house vacuuming things up. And then in food delivery, there are robots that they'll put the food inside the robot and have it drive. You might see that across college campuses here in the United States. So those are some ways that robots interact with other objects. <clears throat> what we're making today is an autonomous robot. This is a robot that is going to be able to go and perform a task just by us, us pushing play. There are people who like to make remote control robots, and you'll control every step as the robot moves. But for us, we're working on making autonomous robots, robots that will do a task on its own when we push the button to make it start. So for the building directions for this robot, we will go to the spike.legoeducation.com site. We'll open up Spike Prime, and then we'll click on Build to get to our building directions and find driving base two. The driving base has probably already been built if you've been following along. What we'll add today are the tools and accessories. So I've already built these and I am ready to code my bot now. So I'll click on home, click on new project, word blocks, and I'm gonna call this week four, the arm. And now I'm ready to start coding. So for our build today, we're using the distance sensor and an arm to manipulate objects. We'll need driving base two, as well as our accessories and tools. So our robot is going to stop when it gets to our sign and then pick up some objects. Our challenge at the end will be to pick up four objects individually. We're ready to code our robot. And the first thing we'll do is turn on our robot and go ahead and connect it through Bluetooth by pushing the button on top and the yellow connect button. Our hub is already updated, so we push green. We'll open our connection window and wait for the name to pop up. Click that blue pair button, and I'll see that our Bluetooth circle has turned solid and stopped beeping, letting us know that we're connected. Now, along the top of our screen, we have our motors as well as our sensors. So I see we have a motor in C, D, E, and a distance sensor in F. And that distance sensor, we can go ahead and start moving our robot, and we should be able to see that distance sensor change distance. So I'm 42 centimeters away now. Let's see how close I am when the arm is almost touching the sensor. Seven centimeters away. 14 centimeters away. So go ahead and try moving your robot around just with your hand and see how that distance sensor changes. And then we'll set our robot back about 50 centimeters. 
And our first task that we want to do is we want to code this robot to drive up to the stop sign and come to a stop. And so I want you to try doing that on your own. And I'm going to put some code in right now that should accomplish that goal. Anytime we're making a robot that moves using two motors, we have three blocks we have to put at the top. The first one is set movement motors. And then our movement motors for this bot are C and D, our two small motors. We want to set one motor rotation to the size of our tire. And that's 17 and a half centimeters. That's the circumference. And we'll also set a movement speed so it's easy to speed up or slow down our robot. I recommend doing about 50% or less to start because sometimes the robot will move faster than our code executes. Now, since we're going to be using the distance sensor to stop our bot, I'm going to tell it to just start moving. And if I push play, this robot's going to just drive and run right into our stop sign. It doesn't know to stop. So I set everything back, and we need to tell this robot to come to a stop. So we're going to use a control, and we are going to use wait until. And we need to go to the blue sensor blocks and find the one that says when distance sensor is closer than, and we're not going to say 15%, we'll say centimeters, and that should stop our bot at a good distance. Now, we have wait until, but we haven't told the robot to stop, so we will need to add a stop moving block. And 15 centimeters looks like it was just a little bit too close because its arm hit our stand. So we're going to move everything back, and we'll change that to probably 20 centimeters. And before we even play the program, I just want to see where 20 centimeters will end up stopping us. That's actually kind of far back. I think I'd rather it stop us at 10 centimeters or 15 centimeters. But I'm going to have our robot go slower. So I'm going to lower my speed to 25% so that it has a chance to see the stop sign. I'll put it back a little ways and hit start. Now that it's moving slower, it sees the distance and stops at a good distance away. So we could go even closer. All right. So we can use our distance sensor. And the way this distance sensor works, this is using sonar. It is sending out high-pitched sounds that are bouncing off objects. So it's bouncing off our little sign and then receiving it back. So just like a bat echolocates or a submarine locates things underwater, we're using sonar with this distance sensor. There are lights on this that you can turn on and off using those purple light blocks, but we won't worry about that today, but that might be something you'd want to explore on your own. The next thing we want to do is we want to start using our arm. Now, the pink blocks are being used to control movement of our robot. We are going to use the blue motor bot to control just motor E. And so I'm going to set another control or another event that when the program starts, I just want my, motor, my arm to go up and down. And I'm going to tell my robot not to move for now while we test our arm going up and down. So when the program starts, I want to run motor E because that's the one that's plugged in. Let's try clockwise and we're going to use degrees. And I want to go 90 degrees and see what happens. So I push play and this should make my arm go up. So if I want my arm to go down, I can use counterclockwise. So at the top, I'm going to say motor E, run counterclockwise for 120 degrees. And then I want the motor to come back up to that same distance. <clears throat> Let's see, and I'm going to put a weight in there. So I'm going to put a control, wait one second. And let's try it. 
This should make my arm go down and then back up. Now, I'm noticing that my arm is going up right into the middle of my distance sensor, so I'd actually like it to stop about here. So I'm gonna move the arm with my fingers and then change all my distances to just 60 degrees. And let's see if that makes the arm go down to the ground and then back up. Excellent. So now we're ready to start grabbing some bricks. And what we'll do is we'll take our colored Lego bricks out of our kit and put them together so that our robot has something to grab whenever it drives up. For this first one, we'll do a large brick. And for the second challenge, you're gonna do individual bricks and try to make your robot make four trips to pick them all up. Now, I have my stop sign right here. I know my robot will stop a certain distance away. So I'm going to try to make it so that it'll drive up, grab this brick, and then bring it back. How would you code that on your own? If you wanna try it yourself, go ahead and pause the video and try to make your own code. And then you can push play and I'll go through and explain how the code works to use the arm and the distance sensor in order to grab objects. All right, I still have my code that goes forward and stops at 10 centimeters away. And I have this other code over here that says when program starts, change the motor. I don't really want it to do all that. What I'd like it to do is I'd like to make sure that the motor goes up to start and starts in the up position. So I can just set that with my hand and we will look through our pink code, our movement code, and I see it's gonna stop moving when it's closer than 10 centimeters. When that happens, I'm gonna go ahead and drag over my code that makes the arm close, running counterclockwise for 60 degrees. And I like to always add weights so that our code doesn't go too fast and our robot has a chance to go. And now we want it to bring it back to where we started. So we're gonna move backwards and let's say 50 centimeters since I've been starting our bot at the 50 centimeter mark. All right, I wanna add a smiley face as well right at the end just so that I can see that my robot thinks it's done with its task. So I'm gonna move this just a little bit. And I think we are ready to go. I push play. My bot drives forward. It sees the stop sign, grabs our pile of bricks, moves back, and then the smiley face turns on. All right, my challenge for you, I want you to lay out the bricks just like this and see if you can create a program that'll go grab each brick individually and bring it back. You might have to add some weights in there or pauses so that you can pull the brick out of the way. You could also test your dif distance by parking your robot here and seeing how far away it is. So this is 32 centimeters for your first one. I see the second one would be 25 centimeters and then 20 centimeters. So come up with some code that'll have your robot go and grab all four of these blocks individually using the distance sensor to decide when to stop. One thing you may wanna add is at the very end, make your arm go up so that it's ready to go get the next block. All right, happy coding and good luck with the challenge. Let me know how it goes.